What is up coordinators and naturals? I am just a simple new type. And in this video, we are going to look at what we know about Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Freedom. Gundam Seed Freedom will be released in Japan tomorrow. Two of you will probably be able to see it tomorrow, but for the rest of us, we must play the waiting game. So I guess I will see you again in six months when we actually watch the movie. Regardless, we are going to ride this hype and dive into what we know about the movie so far. But anyways, let's dive into this. So what do we know about the movie thus far? We all know that the movie was rumored since the end of Destiny, but it wasn't until Sunrise denounced Project Ignited that the eye rolling started to slow down. Project Ignited is an announcement by Sunrise to make more cosmic era focused multimedia. This was announced during the life-size freedom ceremony in China, which by the way, Americans, we really fucked up on not having this one. Not mad, just disappointed. And Sunrise actually followed through. Along with the MSV Project Gundam Seed Eclipse, they finally announced a new movie Movie, Gundam Seed Freedom. I will eventually get around to covering Eclipse as well. The movie's official synopsis is the following. There are independent movements and aggression by Blue Cosmos. In order to calm the situation, a global peace monitoring agency called Compass is established with Lacus as its first president. As members of Compass, Kida and his comrades intervene into various regional battles. Then, a newly established nation called Foundation proposes a joint operation against Blue Cosmos' stronghold. So let's start with the characters. From our coverage on this channel, we know that after Gundam Seed Destiny, Blue Cosmos once again wasn't really dealt with. Sure, they killed Lord Gibral, but another will always rise from their ashes. Like the first Alliance Plant War, it seems that the Cosmic Era is keeping their head in the sand when it comes to human rights violations. I guess it's technically coordinator rights violations? Last we've seen Lacus, she was entering the Plant Supreme Council chambers, making the assumption that she is now the chairman. Two years later, we can assume she stepped down as chairman and still lusts for more power. Look, this movie could try to convince me that Kida and Lacus aren't the enemy, but they're totally the enemy, right? So Lacus goes on to create a hegemony called Compass, which is a joint organization by Orb, the Atlantic Federation, and Plant. Of course, there are other organizations out there. The Eurasian Federation turned into a series of rebel forces that we saw Shin help during Gundam Seed Destiny, so they exist in some shape or form. There is also the Kingdom of Scandinavia, South Africa, and the Republic of East Asia along with many others. But it seems a new neutral organization has popped up in the past two years. This is called Foundation. Foundation is led by Queen Aura Maha Kyber. We know very little about this character. She looks like a female version of Mula Flaga, however. If we look at all the clones in this universe, they all derive from Alda Flaga. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that this could be a female version of Prayer, AKA a potential clone of Mula Flaga, or possibly Alda Flaga. The only other thing we know of Foundation is that the Queen has a personal guard called the Black Knight Squad. This squad consists of seven members. The first is Orphe Lam Tao, who is the leader of Foundation. Su Shou translates to Prime Minister or Chancellor. My guess is the official translation will go with Prime Minister, but who knows. Next is Ingrid Tradal, who is Foundation's Secretary of State. Shura Serpentine is both the Secretary of Defense as well as the Commander of the Royal Guard. The four members of the Royal Guard are Redelard Tradal, Daniel Harper, Lu Xinquang, and Griffin Arbalest. These four seem to be the pilots of the Red Row A, while Shira seems to be the pilot of the Shiva A. More on the units later. We can also assume that Ingrid and Redelard are siblings as they share the same surname, which means one of them's gonna die, right? Orphe and Ingrid don't seem to be a part of the five rural guard mobile suits, but I have a feeling that we will see at least Orphe hop into something by the end of the movie. Now that we know of the new organization and the players on the field, who should we expect to see from the past? Of course, Kira, Lacus, Athern, and Kigali are all the main cast. Based on the uniforms, we can assume Kira, Shin, Luna Maria Hawk, Ramius, and Mula Flaga will be returning as as Compass members. Other Compass members that are returning are Hilda, Herbert Von Reinhardt, and Mars Simeon. I love these three. In Gundam Seed Destiny, they were a part of the Klein faction and were Lacus and the Eternal's top pilots. They are the cosmic era equivalent of the Black Tri-Stars from Universal Century. They really didn't get enough attention in Destiny, so hopefully they will get some good moments in this movie. Other Compass members that are completely new to the cosmic era are Alexi Kano, Albert Heinlein, and Agnes Geibenrath. No information about these characters are known, but based off their uniforms, we can make the assumption that Alexi will be a captain. The question is, will the Archangel be passed down to him, or will he be the captain of this new ship? More on that soon. Albert will most likely fulfill the role of Arnold or Delita in this new ship. You remember Arnold and Delita, those two guys on the Archangel, you never took the time to learn their names and you just called them those two guys. 
And finally, Agnes, who is donning a red uniform. So it is assumed that she will be a new ace pilot. I assume she is going to pilot the new Gyan Shram. Over at Orb, we are introduced to a new character, Toya Mashima. We know nothing about this character, but we know about his family. The Mashima family is one of the five great clans of Orb who run the council. During the second Alliance Plant War, Tatsuki Mashima was head of the family and opposed Kagali, her father Uzumi, and her ideals of neutrality. Tatsuki sided with Unisarian, assisted in harboring Lord Gibral, and eventually was killed. Now it seems his heir is taking over for the family. The question is whether he will follow in his family's footsteps. My guess is that he will constantly be at opposition with Kigali during this movie. Over at Zaft and Plant, we know that Diarka and Izak will once again make their appearance. It seems that Diarka is going to be a Plant Supreme Council member, while Izak is most likely going to be a high commanding officer and possibly a member as well. I'm not sure. The two characters that don't seem to have any loyalties, at least in the trailer, are Atherin Zala and Meirin Hawk. They were also the only two outside of uniform at the end of Destiny, I believe. Who knows about Maiden, but gunplay leaks tells me that Atherin will always be drawn to war. And finally, we have Blue. Blue is a blue robotic bird like Tori that Kira built for Lacus. But don't worry everyone, Pink Chen is still around. Now there is one character that isn't mentioned and it's making me worried, Andrew Watfield. I believe that since they brought back Mula Flaga, Watfield is going to take a background role, which is frustrating. Mula Flaga returning really does take away from the sacrifice he made in Seed. And I like that Watfield and Ramius had a strong bond as they both lost loved ones during the first war. So who knows, but if Watfield does not make an appearance, I am going to riot. Let's talk about the mechs and the battleships. We will start with the two most popular units from the trailer. Of course, first is the STTS-909 Rising Freedom Gundam, which will be Kira's new unit. Unlike the previous unit, I assume this isn't nuclear powered, so it might be weaker in terms of energy than the Strike Freedom. I say this because this leaked article mentions being very energy efficient which is something nuclear-powered Gundams don't have to worry about. Another thing we learned from this article is that the unit will have a 360-degree cockpit. If you look at the UC equivalent of this movie, Char's Counterattack, you see something similar in their mobile suits. More on that thought later. It also has variable phase shift armor, which we also seen on Impulse, Strike Freedom, and Infinite Justice. This will also be the first version of Freedom to have a transforming mobile armor mode, and I agree with the internet, it looks ugly. I am glad that they brought back the white trim instead of the gold trim though. And I still think it looks better than Gundam Wing's bird mode. The frame is able to re-enter Earth's atmosphere with ease and is said to be just as strong as an aircraft even though it can transform. Usually transforming mobile suits means more moving parts which means more points of failure. This unit along with Immortal Justice is developed by Orb which is interesting considering the Strike Freedom was developed by Terminus and the Klein faction. The STTS-808 Immortal Justice Gundam seems to just be an improved version of the Infinite Justice. There hasn't really been great design improvements from the Aegis all the way up to the Immortal Justice, it simply just improves itself and gets better at high mobility operations. Both Justice and Freedom use the same transformable frame. Of course, we will both see Infinite Justice and Strike Freedom make the return. The question is, will these two units be destroyed? I like to think that Kira will go out in a blaze of glory, somehow survive, and then get his new unit. I think the same of Atherin as well, though he might blow himself up. He likes to do that. Another familiar unit that we will see in this movie is the Murasame. Without a doubt, this is the best grunty unit of Destiny, and I'm glad it's making its return. Orb used these units as a test bed for the new transformable frame that we see in the new Freedom and Justice. Now let's talk about the two new units that will be used by Compass that we see in the trailer. The first one is the Gelgug Menace. We know nothing about this unit. Unit, but we know that the Jens, Zakus, and Doms of the Cosmic Era are heavily borrowed from Universal Century, so we can expect similarities to the UC Gelgoog. However, the head looks more like a Jen than it does the UC Gelgoog head. This unit will most likely be piloted by Luna Maria Hawk. The next unit is the Gyan Strom, which looks like a Gyan from Universal Century if it decided to join a white nationalist group. You know the one. Unlike the Gelgoog, we actually see this unit in action as it wields a giant shield, similar to the UC Gyan but it has beam saber bits coming off the edge of the shield and it spins which is it's pretty cool it seems like the new character Agnes will be piloting this unit. One mobile suit that we know will make an appearance based off of Gunpla data is the Force Impulse Spec 2. This will have all similar features of the first Impulse, including the Core Splendor and Force Silhouette. But other than that, not too much is known about this unit. Now let's talk about the Black Knight Squad units. The four members will be using the Black Knight Squad Rudrow A with various accent colors. 
Based off of Gunpla data, we know that this unit will have a giant sword that can be attached to its backpack system. It will also have a beam rifle, as well as some sort of beam cape, which I think we see in this shot. These four units will be piloted by Redelard Treadle, Daniel Harper, Lu Xinquang, and Griffin Arbalest. The other unit is the Black Knight Squad, Shiva A. This unit has a shield that also detaches and becomes what looks like the beam reamers used by Dreadnought Gundam. It also has beam sabers on its feet. It also has the beam cape like the Red Row. This unit will definitely be piloted by Shura Serpentine and functions as a commander type unit. Other units that we see in this trailer include a bunch of daggers and gins being cannon fodder for the main characters. Those poor, poor daggers. We also see a destroy Gundam. This was piloted by Stella and Destiny, but others also pilot this giant beast of a unit. We also see this gin tank randomly, which the closest unit to it would be the uh, 1017 Gen Fuego, but it looks a little bit different. We see Mula Flaga also inside a cockpit of a mobile suit, so he will be piloting something. My guess is that if Kira doesn't destroy the Strike Freedom, Mu will take it, but it may be possible that he is still in possession of the Akatsuki Gundam that he piloted at the end of Destiny. Finally, we get a look at the new flagship, which I imagine will be the home of the new freedom and justice. It has a launch pad and runway outside of the ship, similar to the Argama and Zeta Gundam. Now the question is, will Alexi and the new crew pilot the new ship, or will Ramius's crew become the new captain of the ship, while Alexi and his crew become the new Archangel captain? I bet Ramius will stick with the Archangel, but she's been with that ship for four years. Give her an upgrade. And finally, let's talk about themes. Specifically, this image. I think that this image is the most important image in all of the trailers. Now, why is that? Remember, at the end of our Gundam Seed video, we discussed the heavy influence of the Old Testament and how it plays into the Cosmic Era. The Temple of Solomon is considered the first temple in Jerusalem, built by King Solomon based on the Word of God. Between the temple lay two columns, Boaz and Yaquim. When the Babylonians came in and destroyed the temple, they destroyed Boaz and Yaquim. When Solomon was rebuilt, the two columns never returned. Now, let's break down this image based off of cosmic era terms. We have the two columns, Boaz and Yaquim Dwey. These were two fortresses that protected the plants and were both destroyed during the end of the first Alliance Plant War. Both fortresses never returned, though we saw some others. Now usually the middle represents Solomon, aka the plants, but in this photo we see a seraph, which is in Abrahamic religions considered a celestial being. No, not that celestial being. In cosmic era terms, this represents the coordinators, but this is specifically a Katayoku no Tenshi, or one-winged angel. More specifically, a one-sided angel. The concept of Kira's authoritarian pacifism greatly embodies the concept of the one-winged angel. But usually, those seraphims fall from grace. Does that mean that Kira is going to fall from grace? I genuinely hope that Kira does fall from grace, and that this is foreshadowing to the end. I could be reading way too much into this, but they played heavily into Gundam Seed, so I imagine this might come full circle. One thing we also need to remember is that the Cosmic Era has very much paid homage to Universal Century, whether it be its mobile suits or its themes. Seed is a parallel of MSG, and Destiny has parallels with Zeta and Double Z. So considering this is also a movie, will all this be a parallel to Char's counterattack? If that is the case, who is Char in this situation? Is it Kira, or will it be Orphe? Or will it be Atherin? Are they all going to mysteriously disappear and become space ghosts at the end? This is the biggest question, and I think this is a very big possibility. Now, as of the who and how, that is another question. And let's end this video with some miscellaneous thoughts. This is the miscellaneous section where I go, hey, what about this? First, let's address the ships. Not battleships, I'm talking relationships. Will Kigali and Atherin get together at the end of this movie? My guess is that it will happen to satisfy fans, but based on how they treated her character to begin with, I think it would be more in line with Kigali to choose her nation over her personal feelings of love. Will Kira die at the end of this? God, I hope so. I'm gonna give it an 82% possibility based off of absolutely no data. What about this next stage in human evolution that Foundation is talking about in the trailer? Is there something beyond Ultimate Coordinator? Honestly, after Jesus Babies, Clones of Clones of Clones, and whatever Socius 4 is in Gundam Astray, I genuinely don't care and it almost makes it seem like Blue Cosmos is right, which is not a feeling I should feel. 
it will just be more nonsense that'll have us asking more questions by the end instead of wrapping things up. There is a moment with Kira and Akron in the new Justice Freedom going through a green glow, which reminds me a lot of the end of Char's counterattack with Char and Amado. Perhaps they will both become Force Ghosts by the end of this movie. And last but not least, what the hell is up with these lips? I know I am not the only one to say this, but man, do these lips make the characters off-putting. I know it's going to be so distracting when I actually watch the film. But I think that'll do it for this video. There is so much more that I definitely missed, so if you caught something that you think is important, leave a comment below. Next time, we are going to do a special video where we go into detail and explore the similarities between Universal Century and Cosmic Era. But that will do it for now, coordinators. Remember, you may be excited for this movie, but it is a perfect advertisement to never get lip fillers. Peace.